Starship's launch was a spectacular sight as it lifted off the pad with the thrust of dozens of Raptor engines. The powerful rocket had a significant impact on the surrounding area, affecting structures and systems within hundreds of kilometers. One of the most critical components was the launch pad itself, which sustained some damage during liftoff. What was the extent of the damage and how will it affect future launches? Elon Musk and SpaceX's inspection team have shared some updates on this issue. However, the impact of 33 Raptor engines remained out of the SpaceX team's control. SpaceX Stage 0 damage is more serious than you think. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. Let's explore all the details and implications of Starship's launch pad damage in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. St the recent launch of SpaceX's Ship 25 and Booster 9 was a remarkable achievement, but it also revealed some issues with the spacecraft's quick disconnect arm. This component is responsible for separating the ship and booster during ascent, and it appeared to be misaligned after the launch. Thanks to Starship Gazer, who shared some excellent close-up photos, we can analyze the possible causes and impacts of this anomaly. There are two main hypotheses for why the quick disconnect arm was not in its expected position. One is that the arm detached too late from the ship, disrupting the delicate timing of the separation maneuver. The other is that the arm was subjected to excessive stresses from the 33 Raptor engines of the Super Heavy booster, which generated immense thrust during launch. A closer look at the photos reveals some worrying signs at the hydraulic piston connection point of the quick disconnect arm. This is where the arm attaches to the ship, and it should have two pistons on each side. However, one of them seems to be missing, possibly broken off by the powerful exhaust plume of Booster 9's engines. The loss of this piston could have contributed to the misalignment of the arm. Such anomalies are not trivial in the field of space exploration, where every detail matters. SpaceX will need to investigate and resolve this issue before attempting another flight for Starship. In fact, SpaceX performed a post-launch inspection of the QD to determine the cause and extent of the deviation. The QD is a complex component that connects the Starship to the launch tower and provides power, data, and propellant. It also adjusts its position to align with the Starship during stacking. The QD is essential for the safety and success of future launches, so SpaceX strives to achieve perfection in its operation. Fortunately, the deviation did not damage any critical parts of the QD, such as cables or fuel lines. This indicates that the electronic engine technology at the front end of the QD is working well. However, SpaceX will continue to fine-tune the QD and implement any necessary measures to prevent similar deviations in the future. Next, what many people are curious about now is the actual condition of the launch pad system, or Stage 0. And I can honestly say that things are truly fantastic down here. While we were still curious to see the condition of the cooling steel plate, Musk recently posted an announcement with live images directly below the launch pad, caption, just inspected the Starship launch pad and it is in great condition. No refurbishment needed to the water-cooled steel plate for next launch. Congrats to SpaceX team and contractors for engineering and building such a robust system so rapidly. Indeed, just take a look at these pictures. They show a massive and relatively clean launch pad, despite facing the power of 33 Raptor engines tuned to the max demonstrating significant recovery capabilities. One of the key components under scrutiny was the flame deflector plate, which performed appropriately in its first test against the immense power of the engines. The expected charring of the concrete and fond, along with visible wear on painted locations on the OLM and the base of the tower, attested to the forces at play. However, the deflector plate, crucial for redirecting the fiery exhaust away from the launch pad, remained intact. Taking a closer look at the launch pad has revealed its durability. Aside from scattered small debris, there were no conspicuous signs of large concrete chunks or rebar damage. Zooming in on specific components, the extent of damage to the equipment on the pad surface has been assessed. While one of the drive units supporting the extended arm appears to have shifted, causing a noticeable tilt, the overall structure remains intact. The BQD cover, though fragile, seems to have withstood the launch without any major problems. Although some minor damage was noted, including cracks and potential vent cap displacement, the launch pad largely weathered the formidable forces unleashed during the flight. 
In this second launch, the steel coolant structure in the deluge system not only performed exceptionally well, but also benefited from SpaceX's improvement in the Raptor engine ignition speed. This strategic move was announced by Musk beforehand with the aim of quickly distancing the spacecraft from the launch tower. The intentional action stems from the potential catastrophic damage that could occur if the vehicle encounters a malfunction in the early stages of flight, which could cause it to crash back down onto the pad. With a four-second ignition and Starship rapidly creating distance from the launch pad, it gracefully and impressively ascended. A recently posted slow-mo clip by Musk reveals the impressive size and brightness of the exhaust plume produced by the combined might of the 33 Raptor engines firing simultaneously. Overall, SpaceX reported that the ground systems encountered some minor glitches that did not affect the mission. The company is working to resolve these issues before the next flight test. Aftermath we will meticulously dissect every facet of Starship's fateful flight, decipher its implications and chart SpaceX's course towards future chimes with this groundbreaking launch system. This is your all-encompassing guide to the odyssey of the mightiest rocket ever crafted. The moment we had all been eagerly anticipating finally arrived. A fully assembled and fuel-laden Starship initiated its ascent, harnessing the power of its super-heavy boosters, ascending gracefully into the morning skies above Boca Chica, Texas. Starship soared for a total of four minutes, reaching a maximum altitude of approximately 39 kilometers and attaining a staggering top speed of 2,150 kilometers per hour. However, our enthusiasm was soon met with disappointment. Regrettably, at the four-minute mark, a loss of vector control threw Starship into an unexpected acrobatic display, leading to the activation of the flight termination system. This catastrophic event marked the complete destruction of Starship over the Gulf of Mexico. For aficionados of rocketry and industry experts, a successful inaugural test flight often hinges on the ability to launch from the pad, making Starship's first flight relatively typical. Apart from the remarkable feat of the SLS, which successfully transported its payload to the moon on its maiden attempt, recent instances of inaugural flights and test runs of new rockets such as Relativity's Terran 1 have followed a pattern akin to this, culminating in a failure to reach outer space. Nonetheless, Starship's initial moments after ignition revealed glaring issues. A substantial cloud of dust and smoke enveloped the rocket as it powered up on the orbital launch platform initially appearing retreating. However, it soon began to eject sizable fragments of concrete debris indicating significant damage to the launch pad inflicted by the immensely powerful Raptor V2 engine array. As the clamps released, Starship assumed a slight tilt and slid laterally, likely executing a launch pad avoidance maneuver and established practice aimed at mitigating additional damage to launch infrastructure from liftoff thrust. However, as the booster cleared the Mechazilla Tower, it became evident that three engines had not ignited. In SpaceX's footage, we observed both the rocket's angular liftoff trajectory and the cascade of debris plummeting into the ocean. Nevertheless, Starship remained airborne primarily because it didn't require all 33 engines to achieve liftoff, especially when carrying no payload. The flight, however, continued to unravel with increasingly ominous signs. Additional engines experienced failures and at approximately 30 seconds into the flight, explosion became evident just above the engine housings, resulting in the ejection of debris from the rocket's flanks. Observers surmised that these were the hydraulic power units which generate the pressure needed for the main engines to change their angles for steering. This hydraulic system is also responsible for releasing the second stage. The hydraulic failure hypothesis gains credence due to the subsequent gradual loss of control coupled with two more engine failures, with each engine malfunction accounting for roughly 9% of the total thrust. The loss of these engines and hydraulic power units not only contributed to the rocket's eventual loss of control but also led to a delayed arrival at max Q, a point at which the vehicle faces its most intense mechanical stress due to its velocity and environmental forces. At this juncture, the rocket struggled to maintain its orientation, succumbing to the mounting aerodynamic pressures. With up to eight Raptor engines lost, visible sputtering and flaring from the super-heavy thrust section became evident as the rocket valiantly endeavored to stabilize itself. The result was an unexpected sequence of loops, a stark departure from the intended flight trajectory, a clear indication that something had gone profoundly amiss. It's genuinely impressive how Starship managed to maintain its structural integrity throughout, not just one or two loops but nearly four full rotations as it descended. Starship even encountered a second Max-Q event on its descent before ultimately meeting its explosive demise. It's difficult to overstate the remarkable resilience demonstrated by the fuselage during this particular moment. 
most rockets are designed to disintegrate if they deviate even slightly from their intended trajectory during launch. When setting the goal of building the most powerful rocket ever Starship, Elon Musk may have predicted many challenges he would face on his journey. Well, the things the monster left behind on the ground were more than just a sinkhole on the OLM. After the accident, both the FAA and SpaceX were targeted for criticism by local and environmental groups which partly led to the delay of IFT-2. Learning from that bitter lesson, SpaceX quickly installed the water deluge system on Starship's launch pad. Fortunately, the system worked as expected and the FAA also confirmed that no injuries or public property damage have been reported after the test. SpaceX's second launch attempt of its Starship rocket on Saturday has been commended for its improvement from the first launch, which ended with the rocket exploding after reaching 24 miles into the air. One of the most notable successes is to protect the intact launch pad against the huge thrust of 33 Raptor engines instead of repeating a rock tornado seen seven months ago. Immediately after launch, the FAA noted no damage occurred. The FWS announced that some small pieces of debris were observed but are easily removable. Similarly, SpaceX also confirmed the water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for upcoming vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. Indeed, less than two hours after the launch, we saw the presence of Starship's workers on the launch site to assess the state of the pad. Because the amount of debris caused by the test is not near as much as after IFT-1, the cleanup job is much simpler. The chopstick on the launch tower was rechecked to ensure its operation remained smooth and the result was still good. The team did not detect any error on the important parts such as the electronic engine technology at the front end of the quick disconnect arm. However, there are still some problems and parts that are heavily exposed to the rocket's thrust as listed below. The launch mount's legs could be cracked a little bit and on top of the orbital launch mount, the booster quick disconnect was subjected to a direct engine blast. This is reflected by the scars on it. The outermost tank of the water deluge system looks pretty burnt and got damaged to some extent, which attests to the forces at play. The quick disconnect arm was misaligned caused by the shockwave during the rocket's ascent. The hydraulic piston connection point of the quick disconnect arm is where the arm attaches to the ship and it should have two pistons on each side. One of them seemed to be missing, possibly broken off by the powerful exhaust plume of Booster 9's engines. The loss of this piston could have contributed to the misalignment of the arm. Last but not least, the rocket during its ascent created giant clouds moving at fast speeds, damaging nearby infrastructures. You can see large dents on the GSE shells on the orbital tank farm due to the shockwave generated by the B-9's engine explosion. One of the most enthusiastic organizations in this affair, Another Gulf is Possible, has invited the public to a documentary screening in Brownsville about community objection to SpaceX. On December 1, the film will explore how Brownsville residents and the Carrizo Camacruto tribe of Texas have battled the encroachment of SpaceX on pristine lands. An event invitation says, of course, it's not the first time these local organizations have shown their determination to fight Elon Musk's company. Since SpaceX announced its intention to fly Starship from Starbase, which is perched near where the Rio Grande meets the Gulf of Mexico, opponents to the plan have vocally protested. Such mighty rockets, they say, could unleash untold havoc on the surrounding land, threatening the migratory birds, shorebirds, sea turtles, and ocelots that it sustains. Despite opposition, SpaceX was warmly welcomed by local authorities and supporters in Texas. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the Talk Talk app here down below.